Hi there, this is Clovis from Kinematic Lab. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the Network Stripes object. So let's open the UI Toolkit interface and go in the Others category. So first of all, like the network dots, you have to create a network before to create the Network Stripes. So I have my network in my scene right now, okay. And like the network dots, what is important is that the network object is selected before you click on the network stripes. So doing that the network stripes knows which uh, ne which networks to use. So I have to select it. So I select my network and then I click on the network network stripes button. So that's it. I have my stripe created. And what do we have here? You have a button here which is a pick button and basically you can use it to pick another network okay to just switch between uh, a network and another network and you have this select source button uh, when you click here it selects the network object so you can change some of these parameters like uh, the type of network you can have a grid you can have a circle you can have a, a spiral and let's give it as a line for the moment Okay, and in the network itself you have some parameters like uh, the up vector, so it just uh, the direction where the stripe is looking at, so it looks like it looks at the next the next vertex for the moment, but you can also force it to look at the z axis. Okay, if you change the type uh, like circle, you can see as well what is happening. Okay, fine. And about the others, um, the t these other options, I have to change the width for the moment and then change it to grid, okay, so it's easier to see. And basically you can have the stripes along each row like that or along each dot copy like that. So you can make some different kind of of stripes and if you change it to circle for example and have a few a few different circles like that you can see what it does so you can have multiple circles or just multiple uh, array like that okay so now if I animate the width, for example, I will put some keyframes here. So I have my width animated. If I uncheck the animated option here, nothing happens. If I check it, you see the animation again. And if I change the offset here, you see that the same animation is offset along uh, each vertex of the network and this depends on these two options offset by row or offset by dots so if you just check offset by row you see that it's going to be uh, each, each line like that okay. and if you check offset by dot it's going to be uh, each dot separately so first the inner dots and then to the outer dots and you can uh, of course use these two options together and have something like that happening. So if you change the type of network and choose a grid for example it will make a different result so if you just check offset by row it's going to be offsetted like that okay like line per line if you set offset by dots it's going to be the, the width changing dot dot and you can have these two options together again. So what is cool too is that you well you can change this value to have something something smaller like that okay or something just with a very small delay like that and you can random this offset so it's uh, this offset value plus uh, some random random values so you can have some pretty cool stuff like that 
and this seed button uh, generates another set of random values. And you have the random speed. So this does the same animation but at different speeds per, per dot or per row. We'll just do the animation again after that. Can add some random as well. Also, what is important to notice is that the, the stripes are always following the dots. So if you animate the network, uh, let's say you would change uh, something like uh, the height. Okay, you see that the stripes are following it. And if I add a controller on the height, for example, the noise float, you see my grid is moving up and down and if I I will just add a bit of offset on the grid and you see all my stripes are deforming okay following these dots and I can have the same effect with some circles or spiral along splines etc Okay, and now we can finish with the materials. So, as I said uh, many times in other videos, this object, like the others in UI Toolkit, are already seted with material IDs. So, you all already have some material IDs seted for you. So, if I apply a multi sub object material to that, you will see a nice result. So, if I apply it for the moment, it is black, okay, because you have nothing nothing plugged in the material. I will apply some standards. So for now it is all grey. Okay, simply because here in the materials you don't have uh, multiple IDs. So I have to check this option, multiple IDs, and add more material IDs. So what it does is that it creates five different material IDs and they are, they are in um, in sequence, so you have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and it repeats along along the network. So if I add more materials here in my shader, you see that once I plug another material, we have another one appearing here. So I have to change its color to see it, and I can add more and more and change some colors. Okay. So yes, now you see you see all these materials and you can make them slide uh, and animate them using this slide value. Okay. And you can also add more um more rows to your network. Okay, change the type again. It's gonna, it's gonna still work. Okay, you can animate the slide. And the last thing is about uh, the vertex colors. So if I check this fade option and press the vertex color toggle, it's going to show the vertex colors. Okay, so I can invert this. And it goes from black to white. What is important is that these vertex colors like that cannot be cannot be rendered. Okay, so you have to add to your shader a vertex color map. So I will just drag and drop a vertex color here. And I will just apply a simple standard to my object to, see, to show you how it works. Okay, and I will use my vertex color, so the, the color values from black to white 
to mix two colors together so I will add a mix map to the diffuse and use this black to white values in the mix amount to blend between two colors like uh, a blue and a red color okay so now if I render it you see that these colors are blending from blue to red and you can invert that okay using the invert button so that's it see you in the next video